Eamon Khan here, four seconds out with the one and only, swapping the green chair for the red couch type of thing in the hotels. Ade Oladipo. Ade, how you doing, sir? Not bad at all, my man. Not bad. Just here in Dublin. Good to be here as well. Got here um, early hours of this morning and excited for this one. Excited to see what Katie Taylor can do. It, it, it's going to be difficult against Chantel Cameron, especially when look, you see Chantel walking around, which says she's confident, right? She's not in the room sort of hiding away. So I think um, it's going to be exciting, sold out crowd, that's what we're told. So um, looking forward to a good night of boxing. Now for some observers in boxing, they said that they saw the fight the first time around a lot wider than it was than the three judges saw it on the scorecards. But that gives Katie enough room or wiggle room to improve on a couple of things, fine tune a few things and win the fight on the scorecards. Do you feel that there are small adjustments that Katie can make to get that victory? I'm not sure. I remember the scorecard, so what, 95-95 and I think 96-94 twice for Chantel. I didn't see that watching it back, watching it ringside because I remember Andy Lee was on comms and I was listening to him and he was getting excited at everything Katie did and the crowd. So it made you maybe feel like the rounds were a lot closer. I thought Chantel won it a bit more comfortable than that. So there's a lot of adjustments that need to happen. Um, I thought Chantel bullied her. I thought she looked the strong of the two. Katie's known for her hand speed. I thought Chantel competed in that department and then you probably give Katie the edge in boxing and we didn't really see much boxing from Katie so look if you're Katie you think okay maybe a bit more on the back foot a bit more aggressive if you can a bit more hand speed but those are things that I think Chantel can look at as well um, and not only that but remember Chantel came here last time let's be honest sort of not knowing what she was going to do not knowing how she was going to handle the Irish crowd not knowing how she was going to handle the boo and not knowing how she was going to handle fighting arguably the greatest female fighter of all time. And she probably went in that first round thought, it's not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. So I think we're going to see a lot more confident Chantel as well. Obviously a lot bigger, will rehydrate to be a lot bigger, a lot fresher, a lot younger. And she hasn't had the wars that Katie's had. I don't think we talk about it enough in female boxing, sort of punishment. Um, just because obviously the, the rounds are a lot less and we don't see knockouts, but Katie's had some tough fights, some really, I mean, those two against Delphin Pursun, Lina Dartu many moons back, Tasha Jonas, Amanda Serrano, Chantel. So the wear and tear has got to, it's got to come sometime. Plus she's 37. So um, I don't know, man. I think her back's against the wall in this one. But then the reward is so much bigger if you win. Like considering everything I've said and what everyone else is saying, if she can find a way to win, then the victory is going to be even sweeter. But... This is a tough ask. This is a very, very tough. And at 140, you think, if any advantage, drain her down to 135. Yeah. Like, you know, cheat a little bit if you want. Get her down to 135 and let's see what Chantel can do. But she said, no, she'll roll the dice at 140 again. And I don't know, man. I think you have to make Chantel a big favourite. But it's Katie Taylor. It's Katie Taylor in Dublin. She's got a chance, but I think a slim chance. Speaking of uh, Katie and Chantel, a lot more riding on the future when it comes to Katie Taylor. And people never really question Katie's ability or her status as a trailblazer, as an icon. But they've always questioned how she keeps her motivation up and wanting to strive, wanting to achieve when she's done so much in the sport. Do you feel like, should she find herself in the end of defeat again against Chantel Cameron, that maybe this is the end of the road? Or do you feel there's still fights available, potentially the Amanda Serrano rematch? There are still fights available. Um, there's girls coming up from 130. She's obviously at 140 now. Could she stay at that weight class? Let's not forget, she's undisputed at 135. She's got all those belts there. There's people like Caroline Dubois. Does she really want to take on that kind of younger generation when she doesn't need to? Will she want to go on back-to-back -back defeats considering everything you said about her being the trailblazer, the icon? It's going to be tough. I think it depends on how she loses, if. We're jumping here, but if she loses, I think it's how. If it's a war and it's close on the scorecards, and we're genuinely saying ringside, that's close, then maybe there is an argument to go down to 135 and have a couple more fights. If it's one-sided and she just, they say in boxing father time, I don't know if that applies to females, but you know what I mean? Father time gets her, then maybe it is time to walk away. I thought the perfect time was Amanda Serrano. And, you know, that was four fights ago. So, um... I'm not sure. Katie doesn't look like the kind of person that wants to walk. She looks like boxing is her all. And when it's your all and there isn't maybe other things outside that you're doing, it's not like we're seeing her in the jungle like Tony Bailey. You know, it's like she's crossed over there. So I think there could be potentially another fight if she loses, but it depends how she loses.